Hey Matrix Live, something slightly different for you this week. Uh, we asked the community to provide video demos of their projects and the things they've been working on. So, we've got five people who've come forward to submit videos. Uh, Oleg will present his Matrix Home Automation Setup. This uses Opstroid, Home Assistant, and the Reminder Malbot. Nico gives a selection of smallish features uh, in the Neko client that he works on. That's Nico from Neko. Uh, Timo gives a tour of the current state of the Conduit home server. Conduit's been rapidly advancing this summer. Uh, MTR Nord, who is Marcel, uh, he will present the time tracking bot used by Famidly, Famidly a sort of medical startup in Germany uh, with a matrix as the core of their technology. And Soru Nomi, uh, Soru, who we must shout out for uh, coming up with this idea. Uh, they'll be presenting the uh, cross-signing and key online backup, so that's bootstrapping uh, for cross signing in Fluffy Chat. So I'll let them take it away. Uh, a late entry from Bala and the Noteworthy Gang. Um, they are showing us how to deploy a Matrix home server in two minutes with Noteworthy. Um, I would have cut them off earlier, uh, but I've been promising to, to do a Matrix Live on Noteworthy for a while now. So let's enjoy their presentation at the end. Hi, I'm Oleg Fixel. We all know, in winter time, the days are getting shorter and it's very hard to wake up in the morning. But let's see how Matrix can help us there. I created a bot based on Opstroid Home Assistant skill. This bot can be configured using config file and it can trigger scripts and automation in Home Assistant. There is a documentation how to set it up. Now let's see it in action. There is a help command showing available commands. And we can run each command and see parameters that are available for it. So now we can run a command with a parameter and this will trigger an action on the Home Assistant side. We have another bot here, which is Maubot Reminder. It can send you messages at a particular time. Let's set a timer in one minute. Here we go. Now let's combine the two bots. The reminder bot will tell the home assistant bot to turn on the light. We see the light is off. And in one minute, one bot will trigger the other. We will not wait for one minute, we will just speed up the video. Here we go. Now we see, now the light is on. And we see that Home Assistant gradually increases the brightness over time. We can also control the kettle from here. Let's set a timer for the electric kettle to heat up to 90 degrees. Now the kettle is triggered and will warm up. From the kettle app, we can now see that the heating starts. Let's stop it for now. So let's set a timer to wake us up in the morning. Using element for Android, the reminder bot and the home assistant bot that will trigger the light. Now the light is triggered. By the way, what can be seen on the video is the light starts very low and gradually increases like a sunrise. Thank you for watching this demo and see you in Matrix. Good morning everyone, Nico here from Nico. I thought I'd use this opportunity to show off some smaller features that I didn't make a video of yet because the bigger features I already usually make a video and uh, that's in TWIM so I'll show some smaller features now that uh, you didn't get to see probably. Um, first of all you may see that I have left some space here. We can fix that by running another Nico because 
why just uh, run one Neko if you can run two Nekos? No, uh, jokes aside, sometimes uh, you need to use two accounts or you want to test something or so and then it's uh, useful if you can create a second profile and run another instance side by side and that's what we basically have done here those are two different accounts that you can use to send messages in uh, between like um, another thing that uh, we recently worked on is um, you may have seen that when i hovered here that something happened it actually shows you the file name now if you hover over an image so that you can check if that is actually the file that you were referring to or maybe those uh, files just uh, look the same but are not actually the same file another thing we worked on is uh, so, uh, some uh, time ago it was added that you can uh, complete emoji uh, like when you type uh, red heart or so it will uh, complete that and uh, uh, do a red heart emoji in the chat and uh, we added now that you can actually see the emoji in color next to it so that you have a clearer picture of what you are actually trying to uh, send similarly for um, usernames those are also now cleaned up a bit to look nicer then um, one thing we have, uh, I added quite a while ago, but is one of my favorite features still, is when you send an image like this one, it will take a bit, but uh, after it's sent, you will see that there's a colorful preview here that looks approximately like the image, not actually that, it's not that good of an approximation but it uh, shows you the image that is sent over federation long before you can actually see the image because federation has some lag and your home server may be slow and so you have at least a placeholder here that uh, shows you what you uh, can expect to see before the, the image actually arrives then uh, for my last trick um, what i actually have hidden here is that my username here is actually Nico uh, on the home server Nico.im and that is uh, a home server that we intend to make public uh, somewhat soonish when we figure out some other stuff where you can then re register if you don't have a matrix account already or you don't like mat matrix.org and we then uh, can then put this home server in our readme so that if people don't have an account they can uh, use that to re register. Yeah, that's approximately all that I have and I hope I see you again soon. Hello everyone, I am Timo and today we will take a quick look at the current state of Conduit. Conduit is a matrix home server written in Rust. It's an alternative to Synapse with, with a focus on small deployments like for your home, for your family or for your small community. Conduit's main goals are simple, fast, and reliable experiences, so you don't have to worry about it much. This is Conduit. It works mostly like you would expect. You can create rooms, send messages, send images, and so on, and it's usually pretty fast. And Recently, we made some federation work. For example, this is the main conduit room with lots of people in it, like from matrix.org or fachschaften.org. And I can send a message and you will be able to see it from anywhere. This is my other matrix client and here you can see the message arrived successfully and we can reply and we'll be able to see it over here as well with the avatar working over federation as well there's one other thing we recently implemented which is the admin room which is a place where the server can send messages to the admin team for example warnings and errors and some logs like when someone creates a room Currently it's a bit spammy, 
but we'll be, we'll be working on deduplicating some events so you only have to see the ones that are truly interesting to you. Let's take a look at the ping room, which is a pretty big matrix room with lots of things going on. And I will just scroll up a bit and see the server is usually replying pretty fast. As you might have been able to tell, this is this matrix server is hosted on a Raspberry Pi and I can show you the statistics. It's currently taking a few max of RAM. Where did it go? There it is. Let me kill this. So it's taking 55 MBs of RAM and not a lot of CPU bandwidth. You can see the server is not loaded at all. Thanks for listening. You can find more info on conduit.rs. Hi, I'm Marcel and most of you know me as MTNOT probably. And I'm going to give you a small demo on the time tracking bot by Family. It's a bot designed to track work time at Family. It's designed with the German regulation in mind, so we need to save it two years, so we decided to opt in for Postgres as a saving format. And we do want to provide a CSV export. It's written in Rust, um, has a small setup to do, and let's do the demo. Um, I've got a demo bot, and if we create a room, you will see that it's built, uh, it's supporting end to end encryption and it auto joins. Um, if you now type help, you get a list of commands supported by the time tracking bot and also. Um, let's start with the simplest command, which is in. If you give it a description, you don't need to. Uh, you first get a reply with the actual timestamp used in the database. And if we write out, we stop it. It's required to have either an in or in the out command a description. So we are able to optimize our workflow to and it as well as a record command, which is a shortcut, it's in minutes, and it basically does the same just in one command. And what's upcoming or missing still is the break command, the stats command, which gives you an overview of the time worked, and that's time zone handling so we can for example have one working at in Canada or another person working in Germany and the bot is able to correctly convert it to UTC in the database for simple saving. And on the right side we have the configuration file open. It's um, the usual login data, store path, and database URL, but we have also two arrays. One is the admins array, which are the people allowed to do CSV exports and doing later on stats on other users. This These will most likely be the uh, person doing, uh, looking at this will most likely be your boss. And the allowed users are the employees and the boss itself needs to be in there too. Because otherwise the bot will not be able to respond. It will refuse to even join the room and will not respond to any commands. However, it would join a room with other users that are not allowed uh, on the bot. And when we go back to the tickets, um, you can see we have lots of work still to do. It's not yet open source, but it's planned to be open source soon. 
If you have any more questions, suggestions, or anything else, feel free to join our time tracking bot room and speak to us. And yeah, I hope you now know our time tracking bot from family. Hey, uh, Zora here. Today she wanted to show you the work she's been doing on bootstrapping. Um, bootstrapping is the process of creating cross signing keys and online key backup keys and setting all that stuff up to be able to access all the fancy end-to-end uh, -end encryption features. On the left here, Fluffy Chat has had cross signing and bootstrapping since quite some time already, but it never had the bootstrapping. So always, uh, it, it always just told you, hey, use Element to bootstrap which, well, you can easily set it up in Element, in the settings, security and privacy, and then you can set up cross signing and the like. But you can't do that within Fluffy Chat yet. Um, we can see here, if we go to Death Tools on Element, in the account data, there's only m.direct, push rules, and breadcrumbs, so nothing with um, SSSS yet, which can be all bootstrapped here via this development build of um, Fluffy Chat. So if we go there to settings and start the procedure uh, here, it of course detects, hey, there was no SSSS yet, so we need to set a new passphrase. Um, we're just going to call it test for now to keep it simple. And now it creates uh, the key for SSSS, which we should be able to see now. If we go to back and explore it again, we can see it created a secret storage key and set it as default. Now, do we want to set up cross signing? Yeah, of course we want to use it. For that, um, you need to enter your login password again. And here we can see. Um, now it asks if uh, we want to set up online key backup, which yeah, we want as well because it's helpful. And all is done here. This is great. This is basically the wizard for all the bootstrapping. And if we go now here in the account data again, we can see that it also created a master cross signing key, self signing, and user signing, and mega on backup key, which is great. Um, yes. Now we can, of course, because we have cross signing set up, just go to our HCVE test room and um, verify our other device, whichever this one is. Which one is this? Security and privacy. Uh, T I I N O is this one, so we can just verify it. And. Um, match now we should see that uh, here in the settings security and privacy uh, cross signing is set up the keys are cached locally and they work out the cross signing keys are also cached locally as expected because by the verification, the generated keys were transmitted from Fluffy Chat to Element. And if we go into the Fluffy Chat settings, we can also see that all the, the session is verified, the cross signing keys are backed up, and the online keys are verified. Now, this um, wizard is pretty powerful because it can also change your recovery passphrase. So if we start the wizard again, it first asked, uh, it first detected, hey, there is already an SSSS present, as we can see here, there are keys and secrets associated to it. Do we just want to wipe it or do we want to work with it? No, we want to work with it because we want to change the password. So do we want to use the existing one? The wording is a bit bad, but this basically means, yeah, we want to use the existing one. Uh, uh, yeah, using the existing one would mean setting up in the existing one, but we don't, do not want to use the existing one because we want to create a new one with a new passphrase. So nope. Now we first have to unlock our old one with which we pass it was just test. And this is here an array view because in theory you could have multiple keys for multiple secrets and it could just list all of them and then you just input all your different old passwords. 
And then you're done with that. Now you enter your new password, which will be testing. And now we create that. And no, we do not want to wipe crossing, and no, we do not want to wipe online heat echo. Now here on the right here is still the view from before we changed the password. We can see that the key was z slash blah blah blah. So now if we go back and expose the account data again, there's a new key here, key here, qz. And the default key is set to the new one. And all the secrets here have been re-encrypted. The master key is now encrypted with the new key, the qz one. And same with the self-signing key and all the other ones as well. So we have successfully changed our recovery passphrase with uh, this wizard. So um, that's it for the demo. Thank you for um, watching. See ya.